The Wave by Todd Strasser, Chapter 11. When Lori Saunders got to the publications office the next day, she found a plain white envelope on the floor. Early that morning, or late the afternoon before, someone must have slipped it under the door. Lori picked it up and closed the door behind her. Inside the envelope was a handwritten story with a note attached. Lori's re Lori read the note. Dear Editors of the Grapevine, this is a story I have written for the Grapevine. Don't bother looking for my name because you won't find it. I don't want my friends or other kids to know I wrote this. Scowling, Lori turned to the story. At the top of the page, the anonymous author had written a title. Welcome to the Wave or Else. I'm a junior here at Gordon High. Three or four days ago, me and my friends heard about this thing called the Wave that all the seniors were getting into. We got interested. You know how juniors always want to be like the seniors. A bunch of us went to Mr. Ross's class to see what it was. Some of my friends liked what we heard, but some of us weren't sure. It looked like a dumb game to me. When the class was over, we started to leave, but the senior stopped us in the hall. I didn't know him, but he said he was in Mr. Ross's class and asked, did we want to join the wave? Two of my friends said yes, and two said they didn't know, and I said I wasn't interested. This senior tell started telling us how great the wave was. He said that the more the kids who joined, the better it would get. He said almost all the seniors at school had joined, and most of the juniors, too. Pretty soon, my friends, who first said they didn't know, changed their minds and said they wanted to join. Then the senior turned to me. Aren't you going to stick with your friends, he asked. I told him they were still my friends, even if I didn't join. He kept asking me why I didn't want to join. I just told him I didn't feel like it. Then he got mad. He said pretty soon people in the wave wouldn't want to be friends with people who weren't in it. He even said I'd lose all my friends if I didn't join. I think he was trying to scare me. But it backfired on him. One of my friends said he didn't see why anyone had to join who didn't want to. My other friends agreed and we left. Today I found out that three of my friends joined after some other seniors talked to them. I saw that senior from Mr. Ross's class in the hall and he asked if I had joined yet. I told him I didn't intend to. He said if I didn't join soon it would be too late. All I want to know is, too late for what? Lori refolded the story and put it back in the envelope. Her thoughts about the wave were beginning to come into focus. As Ben left Mr. As Ben left Principal Owen's office, he saw several students putting up a large wave banner in the hall. It was the day of the pep rally, the wave rally, Ross had to remind himself. There were more students in the halls now, and he seemed to be making the wave salute nonstop. If this kept up for much longer, he was going to have one sore arm, he thought. Further down the hall, Brad and Eric were standing at a table, handing out mimeographed pamphlets and shouting, Strength through discipline, strength through community, strength through action. Learn all about the wave, Brad was telling passing students. Here's a pamphlet. And don't forget the wave rally this afternoon, Eric reminded them. Work together and achieve your goals. Ben smiled warily. The untethered energy of these kids was tiring him out. There were wave posters all over the school now. Every single WAVE member seemed to be involved in some activity, recruiting new members, disseminating information, preparing the gym for the rally that afternoon. Ben found it almost overwhelming. A little further down the hall, Ben had a funny, had a funny sensation and stopped. He felt as if he were being followed. A few feet behind him stood Robert, smiling. Ben smiled back and kept going, but a few seconds later he stopped again. Robert was still behind him. Robert, what are you doing? Mr. Ross asked. Mr. Ross, I'm your bodyguard, Robert announced. My what? Robert hesitated slightly. I want to be your bodyguard, he said. I mean, you're the leader, Mr. Ross. I can't let anything happen to you. What could happen to me, Ben's, Ben asked, startled by the notion. But Robert seemed to ignore that question. I know you need a bodyguard, he insisted. I could do it, Mr. Ross. For the first time in my life, I feel... Well, nobody makes jokes about me anymore. I feel like I'm part of something special. Ben nodded. So can't I do it? Robert asked. I know you need a bodyguard. I could do it, Mr. Ross. Ben looked into Robert's face. Where there had once been a withdrawn and unconfident boy, there now stood a serious wave member, concerned for his leader. But a bodyguard? Ben hesitated a moment. Wasn't that going a little too far? More and more he'd begun to recognize the position of importance his students were unconsciously forcing upon him. The ultimate leader of the wave. Several times over the last few days, he had heard wave members discussing orders he had given. Orders to put posters up in the halls, orders to organize the wave movement in the lower grades, 
even the order to change the pep rally into a wave rally. Except the crazy thing was he'd never given those orders. Somehow, they'd simply evolved in the students' imaginations, and once there, they automatically assumed he'd given them. It was as if the wave had taken on a life of its own, and now he and his students were literally riding it. Ben Ross looked at Robert Billings. Somewhere in his mind, he knew that by agreeing to let Robert be his bodyguard, he was also agreeing to become a person who required a bodyguard. Wasn't that, wasn't that what the experiment required as well? All right, Robert, he said. You can be my bodyguard. A wide smile appeared on Robert's face. Ben winked at him and continued down the hall. Perhaps having a bodyguard would be helpful. It was essential to the experiment that he maintain the image of leader of the wave. Having a bodyguard could only enhance that image. The wave rally would be in the gym. This is chapter 12. The wave rally would be in the gym, but Lori Saunders stood by her locker, uncertain that she wanted to go. She still couldn't put words exact into what exactly was bothering her about the wave, but she could feel it growing inside her. Something was wrong. The anonymous letter that morning was a symptom. It wasn't only that a senior had tried to bully a junior into joining the wave. It was more the fact that the junior hadn't put his name on the letter, the fact that he'd been afraid to. It was something Lori herself had been trying to deny for days, but it just wouldn't go away. The wave was scary. Oh, it was just great if you were an unquestioning member, but if you weren't. Lori's thoughts were interrupted by a sudden flurry of shouts out in the quadrangle. She quickly went to a window and saw that two boys were fighting while a crowd of kids stood watching and yelling at them. Lori gasped. One of the fighters was Brian. Was Brian Ammon. She watched as they threw punches at each other and then awkwardly wrestled to the ground. What in the world? Now a teacher ran out and separated the two fighters. Grabbing each tightly by the arm, he started tugging them inside, no doubt to Principal Owen's office. As he went, Brian shouted, Strength through discipline! Strength through community! Strength through action! The other boys shouted back, Ah, shove it! You see that? The sudden sound of a voice so close to her startled Lori, and she jumped around to find David beside her. I hope Prince Balowens lets Brian attend the wave rally after this, David said. Were they fighting about the wave, Lori asked? David shrugged. It's more than that. That kid Brian was fighting? He's this junior named Do Deutsch, who, who's been after Brian's position all year. This thing's been brewing for weeks. I just hope he got what he deserved. But Brian was shouting the wave motto, Lori said. Well, sure, he's really into it. We all are. Even the kid he was fighting? David shook his head. Nah, Deutsch is a jerk, Lori. If he was in the wave, he wouldn't be trying to steal Brian's position. That guy's a real detriment to the team. I wish Schiller would throw him off. Because he isn't in the wave, Lori asked? Yeah, David replied. If he really wanted the best for the team, he'd join the wave instead of giving Brian such a hard time. He's a one-man team, Lori. He's just on a big ego trip, and he's not helping anyone. David looked down the hall at a clock. Come on, we gotta get to the rally. It's gonna start in a second. Suddenly, Lori made a decision. I'm not going, she said. What? David looked shocked. Why not? Because I don't want to. Lori, this is an, this is an incredibly important rally, David said. All the new members of the wave are gonna be there. David, I think you and everyone else are taking this whole wave thing a little bit too seriously. David shook his head. No, I'm not. You're not taking this seriously enough. Look, Lori... You've always been a leader. The other kids, they've always looked up to you. You've got to be at that rally. But that's exactly why I'm not going, Lori tried to explain. Let them make up their own minds about the wave. They're individuals. They don't need me to help them. I don't understand you, David said. David, I can't believe how crazy everybody's gotten. The wave th is taking over everything. Sure, David said, because the wave makes sense, Lori. It works. Everybody's on the same team. Everybody's equal for once. Oh, that's terrific, Lori said sarcastically. Do we all score a touchdown? David stepped back and studied his girlfriend. He hadn't expected anything like this, not from Lori. Don't you see, Lori said, mistaking his hesitation for a glimmer of doubt. You're so idealistic, David. You're so intent on creating some kind of utopian wave society full of equal people and great football teams that you don't see it at all. It can't happen, David. There will always be a few people who won't want to join. They have a right not to join. David squinted at his girlfriend. You know, he said, you're just against this thing because you're not special anymore. Because you're not the best and most popular student in the class now. That's not true and you know it, Lori gasped. I think it is true, David insisted. Now you know how the rest of us felt listening to you always giving the right answers, always being the best. 
How does it feel not to be the best anymore? David, you're being stupid, Lori yelled at him. David nodded. All right, if I'm so stupid, why don't you go find yourself a smart boyfriend? He turned and walked toward, away toward the gym. Lori stood behind and watched him. It's crazy, she thought. Everything is going out of control. From what Lori could hear, the wave rally was a giant success. She was spending the period in the publications office down the hall. It was the only place she could think of going where she could be safe from the questioning looks of kids wondering why she wasn't at the rally. Lori did not want to admit that she was hiding, but it was true. That was how crazy this whole thing had become. You had to hide if you weren't part of it. Lori took out a pen and chewed on it nervously. She had to do something. The grapevine had to do something. A few minutes later, the turning of the doorknob shook her from her thoughts. Lori caught her breath. Had someone come to get her? The door opened and Alex bopped into the beat of the music coming from the earphones. Lori sank back in her chair and let out a big sigh. When Alex saw Lori, he smiled and pulled the earphones off his head. Hey, how come you're not in with the troops? Lori shook her head. Alex, it's not that bad. But Alex just grinned. Oh yeah? Pretty soon they're going to have to change the name of this school to Fort Gordon High. I'm not amused, Alex, Lori said. Alex scrunched up his shoulders and made a face. Lori, you must learn that nothing is above ridicule. Well, if you think they're troopers, aren't you frightened of being drafted too, Lori asked. Alex grinned. Who, me? Then he swiped through the air with several fierce-looking karate chaps. Anyone hassles, anyone hassles me and I'll kung fu them into chop suey. The door of the publications office opened again and now Carl slipped in. Seeing Lori and Alex there, he smiled. Looks like I've stumbled into Anne Frank's attic, he said. The last of the rugged individuals, Alex said. Carl nodded. I believe it. I just came from the rally. They let you out, Alex asked. I had to go to the bathroom, Carl answered. Hey, man, Alex said. You got the wrong place. Carl grinned. This is where I went after the bathroom, any place but that rally. Join the club, Lori said. Maybe we should give ourselves a name, Alex said. If they're the wave, we could be the ripple. What do you think, Carl asked. About calling ourselves the Ripple, Lori said? No, about the wave. I think it's time we put out that issue of the grapevine, Lori said. Excuse me for inject injecting my own not always serious opinion, Alex said, but I think we ought to put it out fast before the rest of the staff gets carried away by the mighty wave. Pass the word around to the other staff members, Lori said. On Sunday at 2 o'clock we'll have an emergency meeting at my house and try to make sure only non-wave members are there. That night, Lori stayed alone in her room. All afternoon, she'd been too preoccupied with the wave to allow herself to feel anything about David. Besides, they'd had fights before, but earlier in the week, David had made a date to take her out that night, and here, here it was, 10.30. It was obvious he wasn't, he wasn't coming, but Lori couldn't quite believe it. They'd been going together since sophomore year, and suddenly something as trivial as the wave had broken them up. Only the wave wasn't trivial. Not anymore. Several times during the evening, Mrs. Saunders had come up to her room to ask if she wanted to talk about it, but Lori said she didn't. Her mother was such a worrywart, and the problem was, at this time, there really was something worth worrying about. Lori had been sitting at her desk trying to write something about the wave for the grapevine, but so far the page of paper before her was empty, except for a few watermarks where a tear or two had fallen. There were knocks on her door, and Lori quickly wiped her eyes at the palm of her hands. It was no, no use. If her mother came in, she'd see that she was crying. I don't want to talk, Mom, she said. But the door had started to open anyway. It's not your mom, babe. Dad? Lori was surprised to see her father. It wasn't that she didn't feel close to him, but unlike her mother, he usually didn't get involved in her problems, unless they somehow concerned golf. Can I come in, her father asked. Well, Dad, Lori smiled slightly, considering the fact that you're already in. Mr. Saunders nodded. I'm sorry to barge in, babe, but your mother and I are both worried. She told you David broke up with me, Lori asked. Ah, uh, yes, she did, Mr. Saunders said. And I'm sorry about that, babe. I really am. I thought he was a nice boy. He was, Lori said. Until the wave, she thought. But, uh, I'm concerned about something else, Lori, about something I heard on the golf course this evening. Mr. Saunders always left work early on Fridays to play nine holes of golf in the Twilight League before the sun went down. What, Dad? Today after school, a boy was beaten up, her father said. Now, I got this story secondhand, so I don't know if it's all accurate. But apparently, there was some kind of rally at school today, and he had resisted joining this wave game or said something critical about it. Lori was speechless. 
The boy's parents are neighbors of one of the men I play golf with. They just moved in this year, so the boy must have been new at school. Sounds like he would have been a perfect candidate for joining the wave, Lori said. Maybe, said Saunders, but Lori, the boy is Jewish. Could that have had anything to do with it? Lori's jaw dropped. You don't think, Dad. You can't believe there's anything like that going on. I mean, I don't like the wave, but it's not like that, Dad. I swear it isn't. Are you sure, Mr. Saunders asked? Well, I, uh, I know everyone who was originally in the wave. I was there when it began. The whole idea was to show how something like Nazi Germany could have happened. It wasn't for us to become little Nazis. It's, it's, it sounds like it's gotten out of hand, Lori, her father said. Has it? Lori just nodded. She was just too shocked to be able to say anything. Some of the men were talking about going to the school on Monday to talk to the principal, Mr. Saunders said. Just, you know, to be on the safe side. Lori nodded. We're going to put out a special issue of the grapevine. We're going to expose this whole thing. Her father was quiet for a, mo for a few moments. That sounds like a good idea, babe, but be careful, okay? I will, Dad, Lori said. I promise.